Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, today, back to working on the 10EE Monarch. And for you guys that have been following along in this series, the first thing you'll notice is, is this doesn't look like the lathe we started with. What happened? It is, I promise. So look, let me tell you the story here. I decided to uh, take it outside. It had a bunch of grease and grime on it. I said, you know, I'm gonna squirt it down with degreaser, hit it with the pressure washer, clean it up. I know a lot of people disagree with me when I, when I talk about pressure washing machines, but very often when I bring a new machine in the shop, the first thing I do is I pressure wash it, get it cleaned up, get all that grease and grime off of it uh, before I bring it to the shop. And no, I'm not too worried about uh, the water getting in anything that it shouldn't, that will hurt anything. Because usually when I'm bringing a new machine to shop, one of the first things I want to do is change all the fluids in it so I don't have to worry if I get water into the fluids. It's going to get changed anyway. The motor and the electronics, as long as you're not powering it up right away, and as long as you're not just pressure washing really heavily on those items, again, a little bit of water in there, it's not going to hurt anything. Uh, when you get through, if it's a sunny day, I'll usually, usually what I'll do is take an air compressor and blow as much of the water off of it as I can. If it's sunny outside, I'll leave it outside and just let it sit in the sun. It'll dry pretty quickly. Uh, and then I'll bring it into the shop and I'll put a fan on it and just blowing that air across it. And you'll be surprised how quickly it'll dry. And usually the other thing that I'll do is I'll take some WD-40 and I will spray down all the areas that have uh, exposed metal just to keep from any surface rust happening. So here's the deal on the paint. Whenever I hit it with a pressure washer, the original blue paint, or I say original, it was the repainted blue paint it just started flaking off. It just was knocking off really quickly. The paint job that was on this was a very poor paint job, uh, really the wrong kind of paint. Uh, they didn't really prep their surfaces properly and it was not sticking very well. Like I said, that pressure washer just not, knocked it right off. So I went ahead, pressure washed the whole thing. Uh, a lot of the original paint up underneath here also came off uh, just using the pressure washer. So, you know, my plan at first was not to repaint this machine. I was just going to get it running and use it. Uh, but obviously that has changed now. And I know that'll make some of you guys happy because you were encouraging me to go ahead and give it a good paint job. I really have no choice now. I guess I do have a choice, but not really. I, I, it needs to be gone through. So here's the game plan on that. I'm going to finish getting everything electrically done. Uh, and once I kind of get everything working on the lathe, then we'll come back in here and strip it down, repaint it. And in the end, it's going to make it a really nice, not only uh, functioning machine, but nice looking machine as well. So there you go. That's what happened. Sorry it was all off camera. Uh, like I said, when I went out to pressure wash it, I really just thought we were going to be knocking the grease and grime off of it. I uh, wasn't anticipating everything that, that unfolded. And um, I really don't do a lot of filming pressure washing because I just like to get my camera equipment out there with all that water going around anyway. So there you go. This is our new paint job. Uh, we're going to leave it like it is right now and uh, go ahead and finish it up and get it uh, electrically running okay. I'll also uh, show this. This is an, a second panel that I put together uh, that's going to go in the lathe. This has a reversing motor starter in it. This is not the original one that was in the lathe. I probably could have used it, but it was just kind of a... I, was, I just had some concerns about it, and I had uh, a reversing motor starter, a bit more modern one, in the shop, that, and I just decided to go ahead and use that. This box that it is, it is in is the same box that was on the lathe that had the original reversing motor starter in it, along with a bunch of other electronics. Uh, I was just able to mount this right in this box. I got all my, my uh, junctions coming into terminal blocks down here. These wires going out the bottom will all go basically to the uh, second panel. Uh, that will basically control this and uh, I do still have the six leads from the motor that will get plugged into this terminal block down here at the bottom um, once I get everything hooked up over there on the lathe. I'm going to go ahead and mount this on the lathe, go ahead and get the motor wired up into this. So right here is all the wires coming out of the, the, this box. I got them all numbered where I can figure out which one. These will all be tied again into that other panel. And I, I cut the length of these wires long enough that it can feed through the lathe, uh, through the conduit that's in the lathe to get to the panel uh, with a little bit of extra on there just for safety's sake. 
Uh, but I'm going to, in the meantime, wire the stuff directly up to the bench. But when the time comes, all the wires will be the right length and we can just pull them through and hopefully our connections will go together pretty easily. So we're ready to go ahead and mount this box back in. There's some hinges on here that just bolt right up to the um, frame of the machine. So we'll just uh, take some bolts here. I'm just kind of pick this up and get it kind of started on the top and the bottom and then we'll get those screwed in there. So this uh, door just kind of swings out. There is a, a little set screw down here that will hold it in place. You unscrew that and it'll swing out out of the way where you can uh, access back in here. Again, there's my wires. There's some conduit that these will fit through eventually. But for right now, I'm more interested in these wires here, which are the um, motor wires that we'll be using. And I'm going to go ahead and get those sent through this back back here. And we'll get those wired in there where they need to be. And we'll be ready to get these hooked up here in a little bit, hopefully. So I think we got this uh, panel all mounted in here just like it's supposed to be. Everything is wired into this. I got my motors come or my leads coming in from the motor down here. All of my terminals are connected in here. Uh, we got these wires. These are loose right now. There is some, like I said, some conduit that will wrap these around up to that front tray where the panel will go. But for now, I just got them coming out the front where we can uh, wire them up on the bench. So uh, there is a cover for this plate. Um, there we go. And uh, that's all buttoned up. We'll tighten that up. I'll probably leave it loose right now in case I need to go back in there. I need to get another screw down there in the bottom. That's pretty much all finished up. Well, I saved you guys the boredom, but I did go ahead and get wired up all the wires coming out of this terminal block that go to the main panel. And again, I pulled my wires so that I got plenty of wire. I will wire these in outside of the lathe to begin with for testing purposes. But when the time is comes, we can feed this down through the conduit down to the tray and we'll have plenty of wire to connect everything down and make the final connections. Uh, but I want to be able to just run them over and hook them up right now for testing purposes. But with this, I think we've got all the wiring done on the lathe itself. Uh, as far as my other panel, I do need to make a change to it. Uh, John had added an, another circuit in there. There's another relay in there. Basically, um, it uses a, one of the terminals off of one of those boards that looks at the health of the system. Uh, basically, if there's an error or something like that, that something's not acting right, it'll send out a signal, and he's got a system in there where that will basically prevent you from turning the lathe on when the boards are in error mode, hopefully. We won't run into that, but uh, just a safety feature so we don't damage anything uh, along the way. So I got to get that circuit added over on the panel. Once that is done, we can take this bundle of wires and we can take the bundle of wires from the other panel down here and get them all hooked up. And uh, let's see, I, I think I got to. I got to put a couple of uh, switches and stuff on a on a term on a panel for me to be able to operate over here. And other than that, I think we'll be ready to try her out. So getting closer and closer. I've just been coming out here in afternoons and evenings after work and whatever, just doing a little bit of wiring at a time. 
It's taking me a while. This is a slow process, but I'm just about got it knocked out, I think. All right. Um, up next, we'll probably show you the, the board wired up. And I don't know that we're going to do a testing in this video, but we are going to at least try to get everything hooked up. Uh, I think I need to do some troubleshooting and go through and do some, some techniques for stuff before we actually powered everything up. So uh, John is working on a procedure for me to do that as well. So there we go. So guys, give you a quick update of where we are on the 10 E project. Uh, it's been a couple of weeks since I actually filmed that last little segment. And part of it, I've been on the road traveling and some stuff like that. And part of it has been, I'm just kind of been working on this in evenings. And when I got a few little, an hour or two here, I, so I'm working on other projects simultaneously in the shop. So, um, you know, it's taking a little while to get here. And the work we've been doing to it has been fairly tedious and time consuming, pretty much the whole project has been so far. But good news is we got a lot of progress done since we've made, gave you guys the last little update. So first off, all the wiring from the lathe is wired into the panel now. And uh, bef previously and kind of over the last couple of evenings, I've been getting on phone calls with John, the guy that's helping me out on this. And uh, we've been going through, he had, he had put together a whole, stack of uh, instructions, just things that need to be checked. A lot of it is like, all right, check your ground, make sure everything's grounded properly. Let's check the, the voltage coming into this, that, and the other. And systematically going through things one step at a time to just confirm that everything is wired up properly and working properly. And, uh, and we've had to be make some adjustments to the, 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 the drive over here. There's a bunch of settings in there we've been working on, fine tuning a lot of that stuff. And uh, it's been, again, slow process. But the good news things is, is, again, that we're making a lot of progress. So right now I can come over here, I hit the main power button. And when I did, you probably heard a relay click over here on the board and green light on this uh, drive. There's a red light. I don't know if you can see it in this drive, but that means we got power on to everything and it is pretty much ready to start going. Over again on the lathe, we're using the lathe controls. So here's the drum switch for the controls. I will tell you right now that I've got to change some wires. It's actually spinning backwards from the way it should be. It's just uh, flipping a couple of wires to fix that. We haven't done it yet. But when you take the lathe forward, it's actually spinning in reverse, but again, no big deal. Go back to off, uh, speak goes down, and then go the other direction. There we go. And there is a time delay that we've got set up kind of high right now for testing purposes. We will turn that down uh, once we kind of finally got to get some other things going. So normally, it, that's the reason there was that delay in going from forward to reverse is I was shifting it faster than we had the delay set for over on the board. Again, that's just something we'll have to make some adjustments on as we progress forward. But, you know, it's, it's definitely very positive sign here. Uh, we have ran into a few little small hiccups on a couple of things and uh, we're in the process of working that out. Uh, we got a couple of potentiometers up here. Again, there's a speed control and a field control. We talked about that before. Uh, to adjust the speed on this motor, the way it is, is you really kind of have two different things that have to be adjusted in that range. And yes, while you can manually do it, the end goal is, is that we're going to be creating a board that will have a single potentiometer that will adjust those properly. Part of what we've been doing in here is the reason I've got some meters hooked up to this is we've been looking at the voltages coming out of these different potentiometers at different settings so that we can create the logic uh, to do that. And uh, in fact, let me show you, let me show you this is kind of cool. I thought I'd show you this. This is kind of a little demo for our speed control system that we're going to be developing to go in here. So as we've talked about before, there's two potentiometers up here, two speed dials, speed control dials. One of them is controlling the current that goes to the armature on the motor, and one of them is the, the field voltage. Uh, and because of the way this motor is, you have to control two different things in order to control the speed. You have to control both the, the voltage and you also have to control the field and the magnets. And as the motor speeds up, 
these things change uh, independently of one another, uh, but they're in a relationship to one another. So the way Monarch did this originally is they had a, a big potentiometer that was on there. It actually had two uh, things that it was controlling through one knob, and it was programmed where uh, through part of the range it wasn't adjusting anything, and then through part of the range it did on both of them. Um, the way that we would have to do this without having a special controller or a special potentiometer, we would have to actually adjust two knobs independently to adjust the speed, which is not very practical. So what he's done here is he's uh, basically created a board, and, the, and we're, we've got to fine tune the settings on this, but this is just kind of a, a, a uh, just showing concept, I guess, more than anything else. But there's a little potentiometer on here. Of course, this on the lathe will be replaced with a full-blown, full-size potentiometer on the machine. But when I turn that, you see the numbers on here. So the top one is showing the value coming from this potentiometer. The second one is showing the, uh, the potentiometer value that will be going to the drive for the, eighth, for the armature current. And then the bottom showing the... Uh, value that would be on the field uh, uh, current or voltage. So if you watch this, what's going to happen is as I turn this, you'll see the drive is, is going to start ramping up. The field is going to stay at 950, and then we get to a certain point about halfway through. We're going to max out here, and then this number is going to start decreasing. And again, we've got to fine tune exactly where these brakes need to be. There may actually be some overlap in them. Right now, I think it's just kind of when you get to the into one range, the other range starts. So let's just watch this. So I'm ramping it up. You see both of them are, both the input and the drive are going up together. We're gonna to get to a point here. Now you see I got there and it maxed out, but now watch the field is decreasing as I continue to turn the knob. So, and that's exactly what has to happen electronically uh, to be able to control that motor. We have to be able to control two different things simultaneously. And uh, this kind of a system is gonna do that. Again, this is just a mock-up right now. We've gotta do the testing, and that's part of what we've been doing already to figure out exactly where the brakes need to be between this and how exactly it needs to operate. And uh, this is also uh, showing we're gonna put a actual speed sensor on the lathe to determine the speed of the motor, which will help make the decisions as far as uh, what's going on and what needs to be done electronically. So um, also attached to this is this little proximity sensor. This proximity sensor we're going to mount to the lathe. There's a place over on the headstock uh, that has 10 segments on it. Uh, it looks kind of like a gear, but not really. It's, it's for actually putting a lock, a spindle lock in there. Uh, but the way this works is, is you could put this like on a gear tooth. It would count the number of gear teeth that went by. So you would put this in close proximity to those gear teeth and it would measure the gap as that metal went across. And to show this, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tap it with a screwdriver and it's gonna, it will actually, you'll see the, the RPMs or the, or the number of uh, pulses per minute show up there here in just a second. So you can see I'm doing about 33, 34. I'm not very consistent, but it's, it's actually counting those impulses. And uh, that's, basically kind of calculating what the motor speed would be. So in reality, it's not gonna be tapping it, it's just gonna be going past that. So if, if I kind of simulate that here with my screwdriver, I don't know if that'll show up or not. Yeah, you can kind of see it. So it doesn't actually have to touch it. But we're gonna be mounting this to the lathe and from that, we'll be able to determine the motor speed uh, as well, and that will go into all this logic eventually. This is not the final version. This is just a, a mock-up to do some testing with, uh, but eventually we'll have a, a, a board on our panel over here. It won't have a display on it. We got this on here so that we can see what's going on, but once we get it figured out, there's no real re need to display it, uh, but that'll be on the board helping us uh, simplify the controls. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the off button, power everything down. Uh, but just giving you a kind of an update of where we're at on this. Um, probably going to still be working on this. I'm not going to be doing a whole lot of real detailed videos on what's going on. It's just not, it's, it's kind of boring. And, and to be honest with you, uh, John's doing most of the figuring this stuff out. I'm just kind of following his instructions. And in many cases, I really don't know how to explain exactly what's going on because uh, he's he's doing all that kind of on his own on, on the side. So 
I'm, I'm probably not going to give a whole lot more details on this until we're ready to kind of button it all up. Uh, and like I said, we will be making a few changes to some things and we're going to be adding some new features into this and, and, but it's going to be a process. You know, we got to figure things out one step at a time. Uh, but we are making progress on it. That's the main thing I wanted you guys to see here is that we are making progress, making good progress toward it. And, uh, we're going to get this thing up and running here, hopefully before too much longer. Uh, and I really want to get this laid. So we're going to get it once, once we get the electronics figured out, we'll get it repainted and, uh, mechanically it seems like it's in pretty good shape. So, um, uh, turned into a good user lathe here in the shop is kind of the, the game plan and replacing that original, you know, drive that was in there, that antique drive that was in there with this. And like I mentioned before, I've got another 10 double E lay that's a little bit older than this one, uh, but very similar electronics to what we got going on with this. And this is kind of my prototype to get the other lathe going. The other lathe I'm doing a total rebuild on and we're going to have the bed reground. We're going to really do a really nice restoration on it and bring that lathe back to almost like new condition. And uh, this is kind of figuring out all the stuff that we're going to need to put into that other lathe uh, once we get to that project down the road. So guys, with that, that is a wrap. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please uh, do subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, those thumbs up, comments, greatly appreciate both of those help out greatly with the analytics over there on YouTube. And I greatly appreciate you guys uh, doing that. Um, hit that bell icon up there to get notifications when we post new videos. And as always, a big, huge thank you to all the supporters of the site out there uh, that uh, help out on Patreon, PayPal, etc. Could not do everything we do without you guys. And, and really, it's, it's a lot of that funding that is helping with the, the expenses of buying the electronics and stuff to get all this stuff going as well. So. Uh, without you guys' help, uh, I'm not going to say I couldn't do it, but it wouldn't be near as easy. And I really, really, really appreciate uh, any help you guys send along. So, guys, with that, we will catch you on the next video. And, uh, again, thanks for watching.